Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Tonight we're going to take a brief look at the Dungeon Alphabet. So this is an A to Z reference for classic dungeon design, expanded, expanded third printing uh, by Michael Curtis. And of course this is from Goodman Games. Goodman Games are the publishers of Games like Dungeon Crawl Classic, Mutant Crawl Classic, uh, The Big Book of Traps, all that kind of stuff. Um, really just a great publisher, great creator of old school style role-playing games and supplements. One of my favorite things about the Goodman Games stuff is the art and just the old school aesthetic that they use. It's, uh, it just, it's very nostalgic and it's... It's uh, deceptively simple in its art and the depictions of the characters and the monsters and all of the things. So what the Dungeon Alphabet is, is it is, it, it's an, like what it says, it's an A to Z reference guide. So basically you have an entry for each letter of the alphabet. And each letter, they pick something that has to do with dungeons. And it's kind of used mainly for DMs to create dungeons on the fly or to populate their dungeons with interesting things. Now, I'm not a DM. I, I've DM'd sometimes, and I think about doing it every once in a while again. But what I like to use this for is for when I'm doing any kind of uh, solo dungeon crawl, maybe something like Four Against Darkness or D100 Dungeon or Advanced Hero Quest, or any, any game like that where I want to embellish the story. I want to, to you know, have some kind of random narrative element that I can use to, to think of something, to use my imagination to come up with cool stories and cool scenarios on the fly. Uh, I really think this is a great companion for Advanced Hero Quest or maybe even uh, Descent, but Descent is uh, more narrative based. But anything that's kind of like a random run based game, kind of like Advanced Hero Quest or, um, oh, what else? You could use this for Mice and Mystics. You could use this for uh, Undercity. You could use this for maybe some of the Dungeons and Dragons games, um, the, the, the Dungeons and Dragons adventure games, games like that where you just want to come up with neat things to think about, neat things to have your characters interact with while you're in dungeons. So like I said, the art in this book is fantastic. I love it. I know some people aren't big fans of the old school style art, but I think it is super evocative. It tickles my nostalgia bone, and it just reminds me of looking through old Dungeons and Dragons manuals back in the 80s. And that's really why I like that. I, I don't do a lot of solo art role playing. I think about solo role playing a lot and I have quite a few solo role playing books and different things to different kind of games to run solo or different systems to use. But I, you know, honestly, I think about it more than I actually do it. And sometimes that's okay. Like, you know, the, the game that I create and play in my mind while I'm just reading these books is probably just as good as the game I would actually play. But maybe we'll go over some different ways to solo role play at some time. Um, and just to cut some of the books I, I would use. So like I said, this is a, um, this is the third edition and I believe they just had a Kickstarter for a new version, but I did not do that. And so we have here, we have the table of contents and that gives you an idea of the, all the, what all the letters are for. So we have, you know, A is for altars, A is for adventurers, B is for books and battles, D is for doors and dragons, J is for jewels, L is for levers, O is for oozes, Q is for questions, S is for statues and stairs. T is for traps and treasure chests, U for the undead, Z is for xenophobia, Y is for yellow, and Z is for zowie. So they, 
<laughs> they kind of had to stretch the uh, the Y and Z. Although I can't remember if the Y mentions anything about like the king in yellow or something. We'll have to take a look at that. So I'm just going to do kind of a quick flip through, flip through and chat about this book. Really nicely put together, hardback, nicely bound, good pages. Very well written. Uh, Goodman Games, I think they have some of the better writers in the industry. So A is for altars, blood stained or radiantly holy. Altars are the threshold separating the mortal and the divine. The sight of ghastly rites or benign entreaties. Altars lie in grand chambers decorated with religious artifacts and symbols or in secret places far from the prying eyes of righteous inquisitors. So then what you get here is you get a D20 table that has all kinds of uh, different altars. So if you were playing Advanced Hero Quest and you know you wanted to populate a room with something on the fly and some kind of cool altar that you could maybe create some kind of quest around, you could roll a die and let's say you roll a 10, you could find an, an altar constructed from bones and it contains sacred texts with a 10% chance of a clerical scroll present or special properties, uh, transmutes base materials into gold once per week. Or if you roll the 16, you could get a altar that was magically preserved ice, ceremonial head uh, ceremonial headdresses and circlets or miters are inside, places a uh, gaius or imparts a quest upon those who touch it. Then we have A is for adventurers. Whether there are dungeons, where, wherever there are dungeons, there are adventurers, brave, foolish, and greedy, seeking to probe their mysteries and return laden with treasure. And the adventurers just gives you a whole bunch of stuff. So you have a dozen unusual adventuring bands. So if you wanted to come up with a cool group of adventurers, you could roll on that table. Then you have B is for books and battles. This is really cool. It's a D100 chart for 100 book titles with titles such as Jokes, Jests, and Grand Guffaws by Zeki Foolscap. <laughs> or Astronomical Phenomenon by Phileas Fetch. Pretty handy for a DM, I think, for when a, when a character finds a book, you could roll it up and then have an entire adventure or quest all about how that book pertains to the character or something they have to search for. And B is for battles. 20 unforeseen developments during a battle. So. Random happenings, random critical things that happen in a battle. I like that. Uh, let's see, number 14. The corpses of dead opponents attract the mindless monsters that serve as the dungeon's cleaning crew. These beasts pay no attention to the livelier combatants, choosing to concentrate their attentions on the easy pickings that litter the battlefield. The battle becomes increasingly difficult as the fighters must navigate around or over flesh-eating oozes, puddings, and other scavenging monsters. So that's, that's a really cool random thing to happen in the middle of a battle. C is for caves. D is for doors, different kinds of doors, traps. Trapped doors, wooden doors, metal doors. D is also for dragons. E is for echoes. Six, ways, six different ways to use echoes in a dungeon. 15 fearsome dungeon dwelling dragons. F is for fungi. We have a D8 roll of different kinds of fungus you could find. Fungus exudes a sticky slime that covers it completely. Any adventurer coming into contact with the fungus risks becoming adhered to it. The more the adventurer struggles, the more entrapped he finds himself until escape becomes impossible. G is for gold. H is for hallways. What evil lyrics at the end of hallways. Here's a cool picture of a party. Uh, I is for inscriptions, trying to decipher this, this large medallion in front of this obelisk or something. J is for jewels. A treasure chest full of jewels. Traps, no doubt. K 
Okay, it's for kobolds. Ten unique kobold tribes. Kobolds adorn, adorn themselves with a war paint they believe protects them in battle. The referee is left to determine if this paint has any actual in-game effect. L is for levers. Causes a room to descend, descend. Nothing happens. Saps the spirit of the puller, resulting in loss of one random ability point. Ooh, ouch. So yeah, so this is mainly used for Dungeon Crawl Classic. And for those of you who have played DCC, you know how <laughs> what an absolutely deadly game that can be. Uh, death lurks around every corner in that game, that is for sure. M is for magic. We have odd magical devices found in the dungeon. M is also for maps. Uh, maps. One of the best things for all dungeon divers. I used to love drawing maps, looking at dungeons. It's always fun. 12 unusual maps found in the dungeon. So we have a temporal anomaly. Seemingly a normal dungeon plan following the map leads the party backwards or forwards in time, allowing them to visit parts of the dungeon when they were new or in the final stages of collapse. Unexpected denizens are encountered in rooms existing before or after the party's current epoch. And woe unto the party who loses their map when outside of their own time period. So that little paragraph right there could set up an entire campaign full of adventure. That's really, really cool. N is for no stone left unturned. Got to find all that gold, right? Looks like some uh, characters in a, in a Skyrim house or something. <laughs> Checking every book, make sure it's not a skill book. 20 random places to hide things. O is for oozes. A D10 roll for different kinds of oozes. P is for pools, pools of radiance perhaps. P is also for potions. Man, that is just an awesome picture right there. I love the detail. Really, really nice. So let's see, a score of puzzling potions. Q is for questions. Eight questions to keep the adventurers guessing. As the party explores the dungeon, they continually find clues and warnings left specifically for them. These clues include messages written on walls, notes stuck in between loose stones, and marked intersections of hallways. Someone appears to be looking out for them, but who and why? R is for rooms, different kind of rooms you could find. Uh, here's a random original purpose of rooms and chambers. These tables are composed of diverse types of rooms, likely to be found within a dungeon setting, divided into categories based on their functions of said rooms. All that is required to use the table is a percentile roll on a single master chart, followed by subsequent roll of a variable dice type on an associated subtable. So you can make up, you could just do an entire dungeon using this and like the hallway charts. R is for relics. 30 random relics. S is for statues. S is for stairs. That looks like a deadly fight on some very precarious stairs there. T is for traps. We'll go over the Goodman uh, book of, giant book of traps at a later time. Tons of awesome stuff in there. I love this picture. This is probably my favorite picture in the whole book. It's like an oil. It's almost like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. This guy, you could tell he fell for this trap, picked up a coin, and died a gruesome death being impaled by all these spikes. And his skeletal corpse is there for all of eternity. That is really, really the the action lines. It's just really a dynamic picture. Super good. U is for the undead. Great picture there. Giant kind of a centipede monster or something. V is for vermin. W is for weird. Got to have weird stuff in a dungeon. 
perplexing things and events of a weird nature. An elegant meal is laid out on a banquet table. The food is warm and partially eaten, but there is no sign of the diners. It is as if suddenly left their meal with no trace of where they went or why. X is for xenophobia. Eight ways to shake up the adventurer's preconceived notions about monsters. Y is for yellow. Six sinister uses of the color yellow. In the lands above, the shade of yellow is one associated with happy circumstances and pleasant days. Yellow is the color of dazzling sunlight, of swaying daffodils in the breeze. In those dank catacombs, yellow, yellows come not in bright, cheerful hues, but in faded tinctures of age and rot. It is a sticky, a sickly shade, calling to mind craven fear, shattering badness, and the unstoppable march to the grave. Uh, it does mention, uh, for referees and players well acquainted with the works of Chambers, Robert W. Chambers, Lovecraft, and Durleth, the color yellow is an all-too-potent reminder of the king in yellow, the wearer of the pallid mask, and the madness-inducing yellow sign. Players acquainted with older horror, classic horror works are sure to recall Charlotte Perkin Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper and the madness that accompanies that tale. So yes, they do invoke the, the strangeness of the color yellow, and then Z is for Zowie. One final awesome image there. So yeah, so that is the dungeon alphabet. Just wanted to take a quick look at that. If some of you have not heard of it, maybe it'll give you an idea of just different ways you might be able to use a book like this in your board games or role-playing games. So all right, well, hope you enjoyed that video and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.